In this video, we're going to take a look at using the animation view to animate some basic transforms completely from scratch. Now here inside my view, I have a capsule, and this capsule has no animation on it. As a matter of fact, well, I mean, technically it's got an animation component, so what I'm going to do is just start completely from scratch. We're going to nuke out the capsule and start all over again. As a matter of fact, let's just create a sphere. So a whole new kind of object, brand new. And let's say we want to animate this object moving around in our scene. How do we go about it? Well, with the sphere selected, I'm going to go under Window and open up our animation window. And I'll kind of move around to kind of utilize the most of my screen space here. Now, the animation window is, it's got our sphere loaded up in it, but right now it can't record any keyframes because it needs an animation clip. Animation clip is going to be a file that stores the keyframe data. So if we click really most of the button, just about any button in here, yeah. <laughs> we're going to get this window. And this is asking us where we want to save our new animation clip. You can see it's of file type anim. And let's call this sphere anim, like so. Now, I'm going to immediately, as soon as I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and close out the animation window because I want to point something out. This has popped up here inside our project view. Generally, I like to take just a moment as soon as I've done this. You can go ahead and animate first if you want to, but I'm going to make a point to stop, create a new folder, which I will call Animation Clips, and we'll drag this right into it. Now, because we did that right here inside the project folder, all of the necessary associations are going to be created for us, which is important. Now, if we select our object, you can see Sphere Anim is inside the animation component. As soon as we selected this object and created that uh, animation clip inside the animation view, we got an animation component automatically attached. If for some reason we didn't have this component, I'm going to right click on the component here in the inspector and remove it. We can create one manually if we so desire. We can have the object selected, come under component, come down to miscellaneous, and there's animation does the exact same thing. If we need to reassociate that clip that we've already created, because right now you'll see the animation is currently set to none, we can expand our animation clips, grab sphere anim, and drag it right on top. Just kind of pointing out a couple of different ways to get that component in place. Now, with that said, let's get back over to our animation window. So we have an animation clip that currently has no keyframes. So how do we go about creating keyframes? First off, let's put our animation view into record mode. As soon as we do that, we get a time slider, and we're now ready to start creating some basic keyframes. If you want, at this point, you could just make any sort of adjustment to uh, one of the properties of this sphere. Like, we could nudge its position a little bit if we wanted to, or we could maybe update its rotation. Any change we make will automatically get keyed. But let's say, just for sake of example, that we have this object exactly where we want it to be, and we don't want to have to change anything to get that automatic keyframe dropped. We could just uh, pick on position X as an example and click add keyframe. Now you'll notice we get a little tiny diamond shape right next to position X that indicates we do have a keyframe dropped. We also get one for position Y and position Z. All three of those have now been keyframed. That's just how it works. So even now, if we drag the time slider forward to say two seconds and we slide over in X, if we were to select position Y and frame up on it, you'll see that we have two separate keyframes for Y, even though only position X has changed. All of your positions are going to be keyframed together, all of your rotations will be keyframed together, and all of your scales will be keyframed together. It's just right. how it works. Right, they're kept as a set because the transform for your position and rotation and scale are saved as vectors or vector threes. Now, we can separate them later if we feel like it, mm -hmm. but as we're dropping these keyframes, they are going to get keyed together. So I, just, I wanted to make sure that got pointed out. Now, again, if we take a look at our time slider, if we started dragging it, we do have some animation here just sliding back and forth in X, and already that's, you know, that is animation. We have moved our object. But what I'm going to do is kind of rotate us around so we can see this motion a little bit more uh, kind of dead on. And let's take a look at adjusting some of this animation. Now, I don't want to get too carried away with curves, but I do want to point out that we could say, come down to position Y, and I'll tap F, and I just framed up on it. We just got a lot closer to this curve, but it looks like uh, nothing really happened here. But take a look at these values. They're a lot closer together. 
The reason it didn't look like it changed is because we have a perfectly flat curve. What I'm going to do is with my time slider right here in the middle of this curve, I'm going to drop another keyframe. I'm going to grab this keyframe in the middle of the curve and drag it up into the air. Now, if you take a look inside the scene view right now, you can see that our sphere is very, very gently sliding up, not by much. So let's zoom out a little here inside of our view. I will hold down shift and roll the mouse wheel back. And now if I take this keyframe and I drag it up even higher, now we start to really see that change. So what I'm doing is I'm animating not by changing the position of the object in the view, but by actually updating the location of the keyframe in the curve editor. Now, again, we have some upcoming lecture over working specifically with curves, but I did want to point out that, that is another valid way to animate, especially if you wanted to do something like a bouncing ball. Uh, that is one way you can go about it. So now if I hit play, we go up and we come back down. It's not much motion, but it is, it is some uh, change in the motion itself. So let's see, we've uh, already taken a look at animating position. Let's say we also want to uh, animate our rotation as well. So we'll go all the way back here to the beginning. And now let's leverage a little bit more of the auto key nature of animating. So I'm going to get my rotate tool out with the E key. And here at uh, a timeline of zero or frame of zero, we can rotate. And you see we automatically get some keys dropped. You'll see that they're color coded. So they are separate from the RGB values you're used to uh, for rotation. Just a way to keep those uh, differentiated. We get uh, magenta, yellow, and cyan. And we have our initial key set. So now if we slide here to the end of our two second timeline, we can give this a totally different rotation. And now if we select our three rotation values, which I'm doing this just by clicking and dragging, we can tap F and see the change in all three of those. So now we can slide back and forth and we have some more animation taking place. Probably not the most useful animation ever, <laughs> but it's certainly uh, getting the point across. Now, of course, we could uh, animate scale too in the exact same fashion, but I think at this point I have uh, got my point across. You have two ways that you could really go about doing this. In fact, there's a third way if you really wanted to. Uh, we could come over here to the very beginning, and this should kind of go without saying, but try not to take anything too terribly much for granted. Uh, we could take, say, scale X and change it here inside the inspector. And because we have changed a value while we are recording, we have just logged a keyframe. Right. And along that lines, you can also adjust the values at a keyframe. For instance, um, if you look at your rotation X, which is the magenta curve, mm -hmm. if you click on the number at minus 67.31, you can type in a specific value at that location. If That's you true. Want. Actually, let's do that for scale, where a second ago I set the scale in the inspector for our first uh, keyframe here. Now, let's say I come out here to our timeline to, out to two seconds, and I know that at two seconds I want this to be scaled up to two times in X. Now I press two and enter and now we've just created animation in yet another way. So really it's just all about changing values. Any way you can think of that will change values while you're in record mode will be registered as animation. Now that is a quick rundown of actually using our our animation window, setting up that animation clip. As soon as you're done, remember to close out the animation window and you can see we are still associated with that clip. We could associate other clips, which is something we'll explore a little later. But I think that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.